Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from Powersonic and Apprentice One to One. In today's video I want to focus in on a key area and that is safety in the solar PV and battery storage industries and in particular two key components within that, the batteries and the inverters. We have loads of considerations on safety to do with roof structures and wind loading, snow loading, working at height and all of that good stuff but there's been some particular discussion around batteries and inverters and in particular again the location that they are installed within. I have some opinions on this and again they are just opinions so we're going to set out what is actually allowed and also what I would consider to be sensible in my opinion. So we do have a problem in the housing stock in the UK we have lots of terraced homes and generally speaking access to place equipment like this is limited. That's just a fact based on the way we all live our lives. We're not blessed with lots of storage space within our homes for big products like this. It's a hard enough battle finding room to mount a consumer unit sometimes. So I totally get that when we're looking at battery storage and inverters, the loft seems like an easy win in terms of installing them, especially with the solar panels being mounted to the roof in any regard. However, there are some safety considerations around that that I want to discuss in the course of this video. And again, just to take in your opinions through sharing this and perhaps learning from some of you guys and girls and the experiences that you might have had installing these systems out in the real world as well. So it is important to note that lots of the manufacturers will state that their products can be installed in loft spaces. They have a wide temperature operating capability. They've been used extensively in countries around the world with much more abrasive loft temperatures than we might find in terms of heat for definite in Australia and America, for example. And the regulations also don't prohibit them being installed in those locations either as yet. So if you are doing that, you're not breaking any rules or guidance or regulation. It's just something that I think we should consider a little bit more carefully as installers before we jump straight down that rabbit hole from the get-go and perhaps try and find somewhere else within a home that might make more sense. There are also battery manufacturers out there who produce their products with safety built in. So I know ICS, for example, have a fire suppression system built into their products. So if there is an issue that they can extinguish themselves shut down before any danger arises. So this kind of technology is building and developing more quickly than perhaps has happened in battery technology over the last 20 years. And even going back maybe two or three years and looking at some of the systems that were installed and the issues that were present isn't a fair comparison to the products that have been installed today. Things are moving that fast. So I've also seen some ill-informed and misguided comparisons between electric scooters, electric vehicles, and your household batteries. And for me, there's some key differences between those products that makes comparing them sort of pointless. You might as well compare them to a nuclear submarine than make those kind of issues that aren't really prevalent to the discussion. Electric scooters are used in a very harsh environment. They're generally ridden around the roads of UK in a very bouncy way, shall we say. The batteries are exposed to more extreme movements, temperatures, weathers, and variations such as that. And the charging technology is usually just a DC plug that's left to pump juice back into the battery until it's full, whereas your house battery has a very different technology that's used to reinstall that energy back into the battery. It's got BMS controls, they have temperature and voltage monitoring built into the packs. Any kind of fluctuation beyond what's considered normal and those processes shut down and the devices actually alarm. So there's key difference there. Um, the battery technology as well in itself, so the chemistry makeup is different. You usually have lithium ion within those electric scooters, where if you've got life per four batteries within your household batteries. And again, with electric vehicles, the charge and discharge rates are massively different. Those batteries are, are more extreme in the way that they're used. Due to that, you've got the movement, you've got the weather, the temperature variance. It's just a totally different product using a totally different application. The main risk of fire with electric vehicles is generally due to an accident or something going wrong out on the road, a bit of debris jumping up and hitting the car. You're not going to see that with your house battery. The one place where you do have a solid comparison in those two applications is the energy storage. So whereas a vehicle could have a 100 kilowatt battery, your household batteries tend to come in 6 kilowatt modules. So there is a lot of energy stored in those two products. So I understand the comparison in that application, but again, there's a totally different concept in the way that they're built, constructed, used and installed. So one of the key things I don't want to do is scare people away from having these batteries in their homes. The fire risk and data that's out there at the minute show that they are a very safe product to in our, have in our homes. We're lucky in this country that statistics are well recorded and generally speaking you're more likely to have a fire in your home due to an electrical appliance 
than anything else and the battery data at the minute is very very positive there's very limited evidence of any battery fires at present there is some historical data from abroad obviously america and australia as examples have used these kind of things for longer than we have due to the very nature of them having a lot more sunshine than we do and there are instances of fires breaking out in people's homes usually that's pinned down to faulty workmanship and in the dc isolators and again when you go down the rabbit hole of starting to mount this equipment outside just speaking about dc isolators they're one of the biggest causes of failure and fire within a PV system and usually it's due to corrosion making its way into that DC isolator because it is in an external environment and it's perhaps not been wired and put together in the best manner. So I'm going to take you out to site and in particular my home and show you some of the things I've put in place around my battery and inverter to try and ensure that it's as safe as possible and in the worst circumstances that we are aware of what's going on and are able to get out of the property to preserve life. Because when something has gone wrong, your home at the end of the day can be rebuilt and replaced. And the important aspect is that things are in place in terms of fire monitoring and then attempts at containment and suppression to the time frame of you getting out kick into play beyond the safe operation of the battery itself. So you can see the Solax inverter there. We've got the DC isolators, consumer unit, changeover switch and all that good stuff that I've shown on the channel before. And we've got the battery down here. These are the products I wanted to show you. So this is the Shelly um, temperature sensor and humidity sensor. So if there's any variation in either humidity or temperature, this starts to get very upset and sends alerts over to my phone, links into the Nest smoke alarms, and we get activations to know that there's something going on. This is also the Shelly flood sensor. So this one lives on the floor, I put it up here so you guys can see it, it has a few prongs on the bottom, basically monitors for any moisture in and around the battery, so it's sighted down in this corner here, this carpet starts to get wet, anything starts to go on, that does the same, fires an alert into the Shelly app and then it syncs up with the Nest smoke alarm, which you can see lives up here. And we have these throughout the house, so as soon as them start getting upset, we get alerted to it and obviously the battery has some technology built in as well and we'll have a look at that right now okay so you can see here i've opened up the solar x website and logged into our particular system here you get a dashboard which gives you all of the information to do with usage and generation and such like but if we go in and have a look at the um, actual inverter itself so you can see here, this is your system it tells you exactly what it's doing at this moment in time for each PV array and then we've got the battery voltages as well if we have a look at the battery analysis you can see here you've got the current power the temperature it's discharge any that's remain remaining and then the historical data of all of those things through a, gr a graph now there is also a battery alarm so if this generates an error code it sees a rising temperature a current fluctuation anything like that it fires into this and it, you can output that into if, if this then that whatever the app's called, and that will then link up with your Nest account and set your smoke alarms off. So you can do all kinds of clever things through the means of the internet to help you get the right outcome in the event something goes wrong. And again, there's all the statistical reports. So if you're getting um, issues through the day to do with your PVA, sorry, your PV outputs, you can log and see all of that. So there is a lot of data in here. And again, alarms outside of just the battery but more in general so really useful app and again you can use this to emphasize the safe system of use for consumers the other reason i don't like loft spaces in terms of mounting equipment is access to them so if a consumer or a user has to go up a loft ladder to make changes to the inverter or inspect and have a look at it um, people do like to do those things putting them in the loft isn't the most sensible location for them I have the same opinion of a gas boiler. I know that they exist in loft spaces as well. I've seen them, it never made any sense to me. Um, but again, sometimes it's the only place that it is gonna work within a home if we are gonna install them. The other option is, lots of these people are excluded from this technology. And is that a fair situation when I'm saying that, generally speaking, these things are never gonna cause anybody a problem? That's the issue. So beyond the technology in the products themselves, obviously the inverters and the batteries have all this smart monitoring. So they're looking at temperatures, humidity, voltages, currents, all the BMS controls doing their thing. 
Outside of that, we can engineer in some methods to try and ensure safe egress of a property in the worst case scenario. One of those is to alert them to a problem. So you've seen earlier on in this video, I've got the Shelley flood and temperature sensors and the wired smoke alarm. Those things are going on all of our installs for consumers to benefit from that as well. So if something's going wrong, you've got the tech in the products and then some external tech and monitoring that's going to alert the occupants to the issue. And then equally, we've started to add these as kind of a last line of defense. So these are automatic fire extinguishers. They're never going to be enough to put out a battery fire, but they might buy someone extra valuable seconds in those worst circumstances to get out of the building. Because at that stage, preserving the install and your home is totally out the window and getting everyone out safely is the priority. And something like this that coats the battery and inverter in a powder might just buy somebody those extra seconds to get out the door and ensure that everybody's safe. It certainly doesn't hurt. They cost an extra 50 pounds or so. We're putting them in a standard now. Thank you to a very kind plumber over on Twitter who first mentioned these. I think it's a good idea. And like I say, they're not gonna put a battery fire out, but they might buy someone an extra few seconds, which could make all the difference. So there you have it. There are lots of considerations around battery and inverter locations. You'll have seen in my own home, it wasn't straightforward. The default argument was, why didn't you just put it outside? Well, on the side of my property, it borders on very close to my neighbor's home, as I'll show you in this picture up here. And I was concerned if there was a problem with a battery, it could take the fence up and burn through their back door. And I'm importing a risk that they never wanted into their home. So it didn't sit right with me. Same down the other side of the property, we've got the driveway, vehicles, access for me and the neighbors, and the back of the home is taken up with doors and windows. So I wasn't really left with an awful lot of options. We went for the converted garage space because it does have that fire door, it does have fire boarding, it does have smoke detection. We now have the flood and temperature monitoring. We have the fire suppression built into the battery and all of the BMS and technology within the inverter and battery itself. It's a well ventilated space. The gas boiler is now history, so there's no real issues around any of that. I think converted garages and garage spaces are probably the best place we're going to find in most people's homes. It is a challenging issue in a terraced home, for example. You wouldn't want them to a side of a front or back door. You definitely wouldn't want them under somebody's stairs, I would say. So, you know, your options kind of are all pointing back towards that loft space. It is a really difficult issue to follow. Uh, tackle. There's no judgment from me. I totally understand why installers are looking at those particular places. At the minute, I'm not quite ready to take that step and we're not installing them into loft spaces um, as a company. But who knows, as we get more confident with this kind of technology and we see the fire suppression technology from the battery manufacturers, for example, and the controls they're putting into place, those opinions could change. You've also got the weight of the batteries as well. And it's not just a case of being able to securely mount them in the loft. It's getting the damn things up there. They weigh an absolute ton, between 70 and 100 kilos, depending on which modular system you go for. So getting them up there is absolutely no fun at all. Better on the ground floor, less lifting. So there is a really fine line between sharing information to help and educate people and make others aware of potential dangers that you could encounter from installing equipment in a certain location as experienced electricians and scaremongering. And I'm very conscious that I'm perhaps stepping over the line into the scaremongering space away from what is educational and factual information. So I wanna reiterate that lots of this product is rated to be installed into loft spaces. The manufacturers are saying that's totally fine and there's currently no regulations that prohibit it. It's just personal opinion and engineering judgment that has been used by installers to best guide us and other people will see this entirely different to myself. There are some people out there who I think have way overstepped the mark and jumped right into the scaremongering stage. They're putting people off from this technology and benefiting from PV and battery storage just because they have these points of view that they know better than anyone else. To me, that's devaluing the whole debate as a whole. The comparisons around electric scooters and electric vehicles, it's just a nonsense to try and prove themselves right. I don't wanna be part of that narrative. So I'm gonna focus in on the facts and the data and keep sharing my message in the way I have done through the course of these videos on my YouTube channel. I hope you found this educational. If you are thinking of having a battery and solar system installed, then you wanna work with a professional installer who's gonna have safety at the forefront of the decisions they make, do check out our website. It's www.powersonic.co. If you've got any questions in and around this and you wanna share your opinions as installers, I would love to hear from you. As I say, we're relatively new to all of this. We are being extra cautious. Please do share them in the comments below. And until the next time, I'll see you then.